Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians. Thank you for taking time to join me today. My friends, of late I have read a book about a person I highly respected over the years. Passed away some years back. Died in his 80s. Was um, Actually had quite a bit of influence here in the United States of America and some of the administrations of some of our presidents. I do not want to mention it, but it's basically some of the presidents that we've had in the past. And of late, reading a book about him, what we've seen is just a rehashing of things people already knew. And I was kind of disappointed in it because what happened is that I was hoping for some new information about this gentleman and that um, it may be even a little more inspirational. The fact is, is it's just rehashing, as I said, old times or old things or things people already knew in this country. And the other thing is, is that we are taking a step backwards when we do not have any new information, but we are just kind of rehashing old times or things of the past. I want to mention to you, I can speak right out of this Bible that I have in my hand here. And people will not listen. The interesting part of all that is that the good Lord said that the people's hearts at times are wax gross and hard and they don't want to listen, that their, their ears are closed and their eyes are shut. And the fact of the matter is, is that's much of what we have today. I do not want to rehash anything that is old, but I do want to speak about what Jude says. And if we look in the epistle of Jude, this is what he says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. I just wanted to point that out because it says, and called. Over the years, I have constantly mentioned that the church is full of men and women that are not called of God, but they will claim to be. And Jude kind of points this out. Because what we read in verse 3, it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And the fact is, is at that time, there were many false brethren arising in the church, and they were claiming actually to be apostles, but they were not. The Apostle Paul writes about this. And the other thing is, is that what he says is in the next verse, he says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before old, of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men. And that is the point we have to point out here. That if you're not called of God and that you're standing in that pulpit and you are preaching things, most likely you are influenced by ungodliness, not the Spirit of God. And St. Paul, as I've often said, wrote that in the last days, what will happen is that many men will claim to be of God, but deny the power thereof. In other words, they'll appear to be religious but they do not have the power, might, and anointing of the Holy Ghost, and they are not speaking on the behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord says that even basically through Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 23, they're walking after the imagination of their own hearts. I have not sent them, says the Lord. And my friends, is it just me, or am I just dumbfounded and do not know what I have been talking about or preaching about? For years on end, I have been speaking on televangelism, destroying the character of Christians, indoctrinating them with worldly qualities and calling it Christian, eliminating the virtues of Christ and replacing them with the education of worldly power. A pastor I know just started posting about Christian nationalism as not of God. My friends, I have been relating this to him and others for years. In a sense, it is too late. Then of recent, I just saw this post, and it reads, In recent years, we have seen parents who object to pornographic books, 
drag queens, movements indoctrinating their children labeled as the most dangerous threats to our democracy and also called domestic terrorists. In reality, the opposite is true. Those who push for the normalization of sexual deviancy, homosexuality, pedophilia, and the mutilization of minds and the bodies of our children are the real predators, and they have many allies. This is from a Christian post. The real problem? It is not what the so-called woke agenda is pushing or presenting. It is a fact and matter of fact that the Christian faith has been sold out to men and women who are not called of God. It is a question you have to ask when you are sitting in the pew on Sunday or you are listening to someone on a televangelistic or evangelical program. Are they called of God? Are they preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are they asking you to seek the things above? Are they preaching against sin, wrongdoing, and evil in this generation? Are they telling you that the Holy Spirit, when it comes upon you, will deliver you from darkness and the evil powers that generate throughout this earth? Will they tell you that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and darkness in high places. Will they tell you that? The problem lays not in the world, my friends, what it designs or desires. It lays squarely in the hands of Christian men and women who had the opportunity to lead the Christian faith into a powerhouse of influence upon a nation. They had the opportunity to openly speak of the virtues and power of Christ manifest within the church, with which in turn would guide and direct a nation into proper standards and ideals of living. This is the problem we face. It is not the world outside. It's the corruption within the church. It's men that say they're called of God that aren't. Let me say to you, Churchill's used the term too late when speaking in the chamber concerning the lack of interest of Hitler building a Luftwaffe. The irresponsible response led to untold deaths that could have been avoided. St. Paul wrote that Israel waited one day too late, and Sodom and Gomorrah had the same tacit outcome concerning Lot's son-in-laws. They did not believe him when he said the Lord was going to destroy the city. Their ears were closed and their eyes were shut. Christians today, my friends, shy away from controversy and do not believe the Lord will reprimand the Christian church. Scourges are already ravaging this nation. We are told the Lord sends scourges that man may consider his ways, that they are wicked, dark, and sinful. Yet the word is so true today, the Lord says, but they will continue in the rejection of God. The value of that word is that today Christians will post about the world, even condemn it, but they will not stand on the behalf of Christ and reprove, rebuke, and exhort a fallen church. St. Paul says many are subverting and their mouths must be stopped. He even writes how Satan himself can change himself into an angel of light and then goes on to say, is it no marvel that his agents are ministers of righteousness? We have a church today that can speak well of the world and its faults, but the church today will not condemn the preachers of heresy and preachers who see Christianity as not driven by the Holy Ghost. By, by the influence of the publicity of the journalistic power of the world. It is all about claiming Christ, but it is as Paul writes in the last days, there will be a falling away. And men will claim to be of God, but deny the power of the gospel to change the heart of man. It will be a Christianity that boasts of itself, takes pride in its power, and will claim to have the ingestion a mental stability, the ingestion of greatness, but it will be as Christ said to the Laodicean church, you are wretched, poor, blind, and naked. You say you have needed nothing, but I will spew thee out of my mouth. 
My friends, this describes our time and it is relevant to the post I just spoke to you about. It most likely is too late for when the Lord sends forth his fury, it will not return until it has accomplished its end. It is as when an archer sends forth his arrow. There is no power that can turn it back. If you are far from Christ, may you return to him. But my friends, listen to what Jude says. I will therefore, in verse 5, put your remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. My friends, to think there would not be a reprimand upon the church of the living God today, the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, is a deception and foolish thinking. Our Bible says that you are to be put in remembrance how the Lord destroyed those who did not believe. Many will prophesy and say, oh no, the church is going to going to stay strong and powerful until the coming of Christ. But it is not true because I just read to you that there will be a falling away. And then he goes on to say, say, and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The church may be flourishing now in worldly power, but it will not always be. The Lord's reprimand and hand is on us today here in the United States of America. The thought there is no such thing as sin is prevalent, not only throughout the country, but throughout the church. That you can walk in Christ and do whatsoever you will and be saved and born again, which it is not true. For the Lord, as often as he said, In the Old Testament and the New, your heart is wax gross. You're misguided. You're misled. You're thinking the wrong things. And these are the ways that are upon us today. My friends, if you are an unbeliever, ask Christ to impart his faith and Holy Ghost upon you. For of a surety there will be a day that judgment of God shall come upon the world. And if you are far from Christ, may you return. And may you put faith again back into Christ and have the fear of God within your soul, mind, and heart. For the days, my friends, ahead of us and are right now as perilous as it has said in the words of St. Paul that perilous times shall come in the last days. My friends, God bless you and God bless the United States of America.